Welcome to the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana. My brothers and sisters, welcome. It is 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are recording live from Dallas, Texas. You are listening to the Sister Speak Show. You are listening to the tour on the Sister Speak Show. I am the host, creator, and producer. Ayana, welcome everybody. Welcome to my first time listeners. Welcome back to my regular listeners. Welcome to my international listeners. Oh my goodness. It is such a blessed, blessed day. You know, I'm so excited that we all are able to come together and for this grand event well what are you speaking about well you know that when we go live that it's going to be on and popping that everything is going up because anything going down is crashing my brothers and sisters we do have a very 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 special guest this evening oh i am so excited oh oh i'm gonna give a proper introduction oh no doubt but let me go ahead and get with all of the house rules you know what i'm saying just to let you know why you listen to one of the freshest podcasts why we are syndicated on Amazon Alexa, and how you can catch us on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Tumblr, SoundCloud, YouTube, obviously through Spreaker. My brothers and sisters, you can check out my website at www.sistergoodthing.com, and you can follow me on Instagram at SGTPGW, my brothers and my sisters. So listen to this. You're listening to a six-segment podcast that is dedicated to you, my brothers and sisters, That includes special guest interviews, live performances, in-studio interviews, and live on-location reports. The special guest, the phenomenal guest, the dynamic guest, who will be on the Sister Speak show, are in fact dynamic and impacting the communities with their passions. The Sister Speak show is a talk show that will keep your mind and your soul informed, energized, and encouraged. Oh, we are a cultural renaissance platform, okay, that influences a climate that is conducive to who you are and who you should be. No reckless entertainment. Mm -mm. Just responsible listening nourishment. We don't go dumb. We go wisdom on the Sister Speaks show. Now that you understand that why we are the flavor in your ear and why we have so much energy. I mean, we are on and popping. So listen, this is what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead and get these commercials in the way. And after these commercials, I'm going to talk about my special guest. Give him a great intro. I got something for you all. Just stay tuned. Stay locked in. You are listening to the tour live on the Sister Speak Show. This is your host, Ayana, and I'm so excited to vibe out with you. When I tell you that everything is electric this evening and epic and the wave is seriously in motion, that's what it is. I'll be right back, okay? Listening to the Sister Speak Show is even easier now with the new abilities available from Spreaker Skill on Amazon Alexa. With Spreaker on Alexa, you can now listen to the Sister Speak Show from even more places from all around the world. You also have navigation control. Fast forward and rewind podcast to make sure you never miss a second of your favorite show. And then you can ask for show recommendations like the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. Brothers and sisters, we want you to listen live and on demand to the Sister Speak Show. There are six segments dedicated to serving you, my brothers and sisters. We have the platform, coming to the stage, the culture climate, the laugh line, the tour, and the search effort. Oh, the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. Sister Good Thing Professional Gift Works presents the Little Beauty Cuties audio visual books created for young queens ages 3 to 12, just $10 per book. Written, illustrated, and narrated by Yana Holloman. The first book available for purchase will be Leah's First Summer Vacation. Be on the lookout for Melanin's Chocolate Sunday Adventure, Princess Anika's Prayer Bubbles, Hannah's First Bake Sale, the Little Beauty Cuties Collection, created for the Little Beauty Cuties in your life. Welcome back. You are listening live to the tour on the Sister Speak show. I am your host, Ayana. My brothers and sisters, look, first of all, look, I'm blessed. 
And I'm blessed because we have a dynamic special guest this evening. My brothers and sisters, recording artist Cedric Brazzle will be my very special guest this evening. He will be calling in brothers and sisters from Miami, Florida, Miami. Stand up. Wait a minute. I got you, Miami. I thought about you. Here we go. I thought about you because this is serious. Uh Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh Uh-oh. Wait a minute now. Uh -uh, Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Come on, Miami. Stand up. Cedric Brazzo, my special guest, will be calling in. R&B is such a great, great, great genre. He's an R&B singer. We're going to get into his passions, his purpose, you know, his his aspect, actually his perspective on the music industry, what he grew up listening to, you know, just all the good juicy things, you know, and respectful questions. We don't get into people's business because it's not our business. Look, we mind our business here on the Sister Speak show. Okay. That's because, look, that's what it's about. Some things, it's just not your business. But listen to all the supporters, his family, friends, everybody. Look, thank you for listening live to the tour on the Sister Speaks Show. I just had just to put just a little background music in there to let you know I'm rocking with you, Miami. I'm rocking with you, Florida. I'm rocking with everybody. So listen, this is what we're going to do because we just got to get right into this. Okay, my special guest is going to be calling in. And I thought what better way to introduce my special guest Look, we got to play his song. So we're going to be discussing his song, but I'm going to play it right now. This one is entitled Till the Morning, Brothers and Sisters. And I'll catch you on the other side of this groove, Cedric Brazel. Till the Morning. I like to kill him softly. It's late and calling. I'm trying to get through to you. I'm in town till the morning, be bad. Would you mind if I come through, 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 through? I just wanna come and see. I just wanna come, just wanna come and see you. Just sit back and relax Matter of fact, sit on my lap We ain't gotta rush it Kissing you all down your neck While I'm rubbing your thighs and your back Damn, you got me wondering Can I come over till the morning? Can I stay over till the morning? Can I come over? Can I come over till the morning? Can we make love until the morning, baby? Can I come over till the morning? Can I stay over till the morning? Can I come over? Can I come over till the morning? Making love until the morning, morning Sorry. I just left the hotel Cause the Uber still had me waiting Think of all the love we could be making Think of all this love you could be taking I'll grab your waist to show you I want it Take all around until you're on it Let me remind you just who wants it Yeah Cause you know that I know you're down for it You know that I'll blow your mind And deep down you know that I'm good for it I hope protection will be fine So girls just sit back and relax Matter of fact sit on my lap We ain't gotta rush it Kissing you all down your neck While I'm rubbing your thighs and your back Damn you got me wondering Can I come over till the morning? Can I stay over till the morning? Can I come over? Can I come over till the morning? Can we make love until the morning baby? Can I come over till the morning? Can I stay over till the morning? Can I come over? Can I come over till the morning? Make Making love till the morning. Making love till the morning. I'ma put it down for you. I'm even going down on you. Baby, I won't let you down. No, no. Making love till the morning. I'ma put it down for you. I'll go over time with you. Baby, let's take our time. Yeah. Making love till the morning. Oh, oh, oh. Making love till the morning. Yeah. Making love to the 
Brothers and Sisters, Till the Morning by Cedric Brazel. And I must say, my brother, I definitely, even though he has not called in just yet, because it's just not time yet, but that song right there is on fire. You know, R&B music is just that, rhythm and blues. Sometimes I like to call it R&B, rhythm and vibes. You know, when you can put together a good production and, and, and get your point across to the audience, to where the audience is giving you this scream, ah, ah. I love you. It's always been you. You know, when you can get that from the ladies in the audience, because, you know, when you sing songs like that, you got to expect somebody to be like, I know, no, I know he was singing to me. No, he was. No, he looked right at me in the seventh row, in the sixth seat. He pointed at me and he said, can I come over to the morning? See, songs like that, you know, they become classics because they're evoking emotions. And, you know, a lot of people call it baby making music and, you know, good riding with the top down music, you know, just that vibe, you know, setting the setting the mood, you know, and that's what R&B music does. And so, you know. I, I grew up, I was born in the 70s, so I have a particular type of music that I like to listen to. You know, I like to listen to great jams, great vibes, and music that actually says something, you know. And it just takes me back to all of the R&B singers, especially the male singers, who just have such a huge following, especially female following, where the women are throwing their panties on the stage, you know, they want to have their baby, they're, they're, they're sneaking into the hotel, they're trying to sleep with everybody just to get to the R&B singer. I mean, it's a whole lot of things that encompasses being a singer because that's what the music does. It just draws you in. I know, before I knew everything, I went to an R. Kelly concert, okay? And I thought, I, was a, I thought he was singing just to me. Especially when he started singing Your Body's Calling. I, uh, I was like, well, I, I didn't know you had the number, Kels, but okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, you know, and then there's some R&B music where it's just like, mm, I'll pass. You know what I'm saying? So one thing that I really want to ask uh, Cedric when he calls in is just, you know, what influences him to write? You know, is it emotions uh relationships you know what is it oh i get to ask <laughs> John Jay. my brothers and sisters calling in live to the tour on the sister speak show is my special guest recording artist cedric brazzo let's give him a round of applause my brothers and sisters how are you doing I'm doing well. I thank you for asking. You know, I'm so excited that I get to interview you this evening. It's been, I've, I've been waiting. I couldn't wait for it to be seven o'clock, you know, so I could go live and set the stage because, you know, I got a real recording artist coming on. You know, I always have real recording artists coming on. But, you know, Cedric, first of all, thank you so much uh, for calling in and you're right on time. So big ups to you for that. And um, I just want to start off the bat by saying, you know, I really appreciate all of what I saw once I was, um, you know, brought brought to the awareness of who you are, you know, with your website, you know, your tour dates, your music, just your entire brand. The support group that you have around you is absolutely amazing. So off the bat, just big ups to you and everything that you have going on. Oh, of course. You're welcome. So how is the weather in Miami? It's hot. I'm making a way, say? It's serious. I know it. And you know, it's hot out here. I'm in Dallas, Texas, and it's serious. Got in the car a couple of days ago. It said 106, and that was just leaving out the garage. I was like, 106? Isn't that like a radio station or something? Like, what is this? <laughs> What is this heat and where did it come from? I felt I, I was feeling the heat like maybe my reparations is in this heat. Let me hold on just a little longer. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let's get started. You know, um, when did you discover that music was your passion? Music, school, music, my whole life. So it became something, the only thing I know really. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so what were you listening to growing up? Um, I love Michael. They mm-hmm. bought me everything Michael, and they always bought me everything Brandy. Those are two people that they always kept in my face. Wow. So what Michael? Because see, Michael was like, you know, that evolution chart, which I don't believe in evolution, but just for an example where they show from monkey to man. You know, Michael Jackson has evolved. So which Michael Jackson are we talking? Michael Jackson when with his brothers? Are you talking about when he had on the white suit with the with the uh, black shirt, you know, open? You know, which Michael are you talking about? Well, my first memory of Michael was the movie Moonwalk. Mm, okay. Yes. He bought that movie for me. And I think it was about, I think it was a bad album, but mm-hmm. they, they still that movie into me. That's what I'm back with. That's my first agency of a recording artist. My first memory of any recording artist ever. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get, you know, I grew up around the time where, okay, my parents had eight tracks. So that's how, you know, my parents were born in the 40s. So I grew up. Uh, seeing Michael Jackson uh, with his br- the Jackson Five, you know, uh, from eight tracks. I saw the whole transition from eight tracks to records to cassettes, and just that whole vibe. And I remember my mom bought me, my parents bought me uh, the Michael Jackson poster where he had the yellow sweater on and the bow tie and the and the easy curl, right? And so I was like, okay, all right, you know, I was like really feeling Michael because it was just something about you know, Michael Jackson. And then I remember seeing him perform on the Grammys, right? And so then when he did the moonwalk, oh, that was it. Oh, that was it. I don't, I think everybody in the world tried to do the moonwalk after we saw that. Of course. I tried. Mine was more like the Venus walk. Um, More probably like the Neptune walk. I, <laughs> I was... <laughs> I, I could never get the full, the full, the full slide, you know what I'm saying? But definitely an icon and I can see why you said that um what is it about you know just to drive just a little bit into um he Michael Jackson as a musical influence because that's a common musical influence and I can see why but is it anything particular is it the harmony is it the production or what is it about his particular style of singing and performance that that you like You know what? Hold on for a second. Can you can you move to a little bit a better location because your phone is breaking up and I don't want anybody to miss anything that you're saying. But the interview got a little groggle right there. Brothers and sisters, you are listening live to the tour on the Sister Speak show where contemporary meets vision, sound, and, oh yes, and action, a talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. Okay, so, um, and so you said that part, and what else about Michael Jackson? Um, the the musicality? Yes, the musicality. The production. There. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The production and just the, the, the scale of production that he always put into his work. Mm. He always made sure everything was perfect and on point. That's something that I really respect about him. He was really hard working and made sure it was right just for his fans and for the people who supported him and loved him because mm-hmm. he knew that was his purpose. True, true, true. And it was just, um, you know, that dancing ability and just it was just something about him. And also, um, you know, also still, you know, trying to still remain private while while still being a huge icon. You know, that's probably that yeah. that could be so difficult because I feel like a lot of people who are in the limelight like that, a lot of times they just want to steal away and 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 chill out you know um and so you mentioned brandy who i also you know I, i'm down with brandy you know when i want to be down came out i was like i need a swing and i need a tree okay i need <laughs> i was trying to be <laughs> i was influenced okay so you know what about brandy um do you like um i love her tone yeah her musicality again is Perfect on harmonies. Something about her music when you listen to it, she does something to you psychologically. Like hmm. it's, there's a, a depth to her music that I feel like most people haven't even touched yet. And her music is so beyond today. Yes. Um, her tone is phenomenal. Her runs are phenomenal. 
everything about this woman musically is just phenomenal, phenomenally practiced, rehearsed, and it's just something that I hope she can steal a lot of work into. So right. I definitely respect everything about her. Right. Now let's talk about you. How would you describe your music? How would I describe my music? Good question. I would think, other than being about R&B, I think a feeling and a vibe. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I can't really make music. I feel like I, people can't feel. I need people to feel. That's something that I feel like is my job to make people do. As a singer, I'm a vessel, so I'm going to emote emotion and emote feelings. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely say a feeling. Just something that you can listen to and you may take you back to some time in your life that you experience or something that you can relate. Right. That's, no. that's what I, I would really would like to. That's something I really want my music to do for people. I want them to find a place that they can mm-hmm. say, hey, I've been through this. Somebody relates to me. Mm. So. Yeah, that's what I and that's what I appreciate about music and and just the gift of writing because it's not only that you're a singer, you're a writer, you know, and right. and 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 that is a gift within itself. So the fact that you can mm-hmm. write and sing, and that is something you know, that is a form of speech, if you will, singing that really connects yeah. with a lot of people. It's universal, you know, no matter where right. you are, no matter what language you speak, you know, mm-hmm. music touches people period and so then when you also have the gift of writing I think you just have an edge you know you have an edge versus you know you could have somebody write for you you may have a ghost writer but whatever but if this is just your gift I think you have an edge on being able to just really enter into those Grammy nominations and you know billboard charts and 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 being able to just be in a in a genre and in a lane that's so different just from the power of your pen you know what I'm saying yes yes yeah. That's amazing. So, do you find yourself writing to also heal? Yes. Um, it's only with my outlet, personally. Yeah. Um, I'm naturally an introvert, so it's my best way is to express myself creatively. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a way for me to, to, to formalize my feelings and the things I've been through it and actually say, okay, this is what it is. You know, but sometimes we go through things that seem as we go through things, but we never actually formalize what we're going through. Mm-hmm. We just go through it, and, and it's a whole bar of emotions, and it's just a whole thing, but when you sit down and you break it down to what it what it is, whatever the issue is, whatever it may be at that time, it kind of helps you heal from it once you recall it by his name, if that makes sense. No, it does. It makes all the, it makes all the wisdom, you know, and I was just thinking, like, you know, with, with us living in a society, male and female, um, it's often that, and we've heard this before, but it still has to be visited until it changes, is that a lot of times, like you said, you know, um, most of the time men keep things on the inside and women express themselves more. And that's so dangerous. And I think that it is, you know, because it's so dangerous to, to teach a child to, uh, to, to go into these roles that will then limit their expression and then cause havoc and wreck havoc later on in somebody's life, whether it's uh, uh, their wives' lives, their children's lives, co-workers, whatever. And, um, you know, how important do you think it is for men in particular to to talk it out, to write it out, to, to get it out? I think it's really important. I just feel like, to be honest, we live in a time where expressing ourselves we're told to express ourselves as men and male, male figures. We're told to express ourselves, but we're not given much of a capacity to do that. Mm. So I do so, but I feel like in music, I'm allowed to do that, and, and it's not seen as an issue because it's just a form of an outlet. But in society, they men have an issue with expressing themselves because I just feel like we're told we're supposed to, but then when we do, it just shows a sign of weakness, so we still mm. hold back and, and, and keep from it. But I'm thankful that this outlet for me is yes. that way for me doing it, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm actually allowed to release because it's not something that we get to do as a society. It's right. you look back at how history has played out and still plays mm. out. Mm. And, you know, that's so really. sad because we've never, thank you for sharing that. It is well said, you know, um, I, we, I've never seen society. None of us have ever seen society, but we often right. find ourselves saying Society says, well, society says, well, have we ever seen society? Because I feel like society is a sucker. You know what I'm saying? I feel like society is a sucker and it's hiding, you know, because society knows that a lot of people want to beat it up. You know what I'm saying? It's just like society is this sucker that just dictates all these stereotypes and all these ways of being. And and, and next thing you know, it's just like, well, when's the next society meeting? You know what I mean? Like you have you have you have city council meetings. 
you have board of supervisor meetings, but where, where's the society meeting at? You know, cause I was just thinking, right. cause the same thing I was thinking about, like the family feud, this is kind of off, but it's on at the same time. I needed to know who the hundred people are that they survey. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't no way that y'all could come up with these answers. Y'all ain't been to the hood. Ain't no way. Who is answering these questions? So it's just like, right. who is putting out into the world these thought patterns, these, these gender, um, and I'm being very careful when I say this, uh, these ways of, of how to, uh, limit yourself as a man and limit yourself as a woman, you know, who is society? Because society has led a lot of people to their grave. Society has led a lot of people to mental illness. Okay. Society is a bully. And, and, and it's, and it's like almost like an unseen bully, but you can see right. all of the effects of the damage mm-hmm. that society does. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Cause I, I hate what they do to my brothers. You know, I'm all for my brothers. I'm all for my sisters. You know, that's why we call it. Look, the sister speak show, but it, I'm all for my brothers and my sisters. And so when I see, our uh, our people struggling with things that if they would just unlearn, you know, unlearn it, do away with it, put that old way of thinking away. You know, I feel like if, if, if our brothers and sisters would be able to unlearn a lot of the things that they've learned, they would be more activated and, 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 and more healthy mentally, financially, and spiritually. You know what I'm saying? Right. I agree. Thank you. I we appreciate it. We do. We to get to that place no, go ahead. We got a long way to go. It's like, I feel like in some ways we're moving forward, but there's still that, hmm. that group that still wants to hold on to what they think things are supposed to be. So I feel like we got a, we got a way to go, but I just, I have faith that we'll get there. Yes. We definitely have faith that we get there. We have been, we've definitely been overpowering people, so I don't think, yes. I don't think we'll have that problem. Yes, I, I appreciate you for sharing that. You know, I so far this interview is absolutely beautiful. You're very articulate. You're very wise. And I love it when my special guests bring their scuba gear to the show because that means we get to go deep sea conversating, you know, conversing, conversing, brothers and sisters. I don't want nobody saying, oh, you said conversating. Deep sea conversing, okay, <clears throat> on the Sister Speak show. So let's get a little bit more into who Cedric Brazel is. And let's just talk about your single, Till the Morning. Played it before you called in. Absolutely loved it. I was trying to make sure I didn't see any women throwing any panties on the stage. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm I'm serious. I done seen some things when it comes to R&B singers. And I'm going to keep this professional, you know, and, and not get all into your business. But I'm just going to ask around your business just for the aspect of, you know, just your experiences as a singer and the crowd and just, you know, all of that juicy stuff. Okay. So, okay, um, when it comes to your single, Till the Morning, what inspired you to write that? I'm going to say that I've been through a few situations in my life, and it's pretty much one of those, like a journal entry, pretty much. It's pretty much a situation that I had to go through. I wrote about it, and everybody can relate to it. If you've ever been in love or felt somebody, you've, you've experienced this moment before. You've experienced being in love and, and just your goal being to get to whoever that other person is and just be next to the leading user. And that's what that song is about. It's about mainly a guy reaching out to the girl and saying, you know, I'm here to do whatever. Like, I'm here for you. Like, I'm, I just want to please. And that's what the song is about. It's a guy humbly coming from there and just, mm-hmm. just taking a different tactic. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Oh, of I course. Oh, of course. And so, you know, when you, when, when you're writing those lyrics, you know, um, and I'm listening to the whole song and just the entire composition of it. It's just like, oh yeah, he's definitely creating an ambiance in his own, you know, for, for the listening audience to really be like, yes, till the morning. Yes, you can stay. Look, yes, you can stay. (laughs) Of course you can, you know, and it's just like, you know, like I was saying before, that's the type of music that you play to set the mood or, you know, you're listening right. to with the top down on a date headed back to the house. You know what I'm saying? It's right. just like that type of great, I love great groove musics. And 
um, music that really tells me exactly what you want, you know, and, and, right, and, right. and, and it's no, okay. I know what he wants. He didn't said it, you know, it, like, like Teddy right. P like Teddy P he said, turn them off. I know that he wants me to turn the lights off. Cause he just said it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's just like the command of the song, you know, it, yeah. it, it, I think, um, it, it, it makes for a beautiful dance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Oh, gosh. Really, I, really, really, really like that. I feel like we fall away from that. That's what I love so much about the 90s. It had a feeling. You were able to, you were able to express yourself. You know, you know express the way you feel and how you love, you know? Yeah. And I, I miss that you know, so much. And it had a, it's a feeling to it that you feel even today. You can feel the same way. So I wanted to bring something like that to light. Bring that something back that was familiar, you know? Yes. So, because I was, you know... I, and, and you reached it and I want you to continue to, you know, putting out music like that, because that is what is is needed to almost resuscitate, if you will, uh, the music industry as a whole and and to keep the solidness, uh, if you will, of R&B, you know, because there's rhythm and blues and then there's rhythm and vibes. And I feel like. <laughs> you you've reached both. You've reached the blue, the rhythm and blues aspect, but you've also reached the rhythm and vibe. And when you put out music like that, it's it it creates a longevity. So when I'm listening through my shuffle, I know that I can go to till the morning because it's a classic. Because it 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 uh, it gets the mood every time. And I feel like that's what R and B yeah. artists and singers in general, artists in yeah. general rather, should always have that goal in mind. Can this song be played 15 years later? Can it be played 20 years later? You know, because there is just some music that has was put out in 1970, 1960. You know, you you got Marvin Gaye. I want you still a classic to this very day. And 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 that's the music that, you know, he, he obviously and whoever his production team, they thought about later on. You know, not right. not trying to be a fly by night, not trying to be, you know, you'll have your 15 minutes right. of fame, but uh, right. just always. Don't yes, 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 indeed. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, what what's the buzz been uh, with Till the Morning from from your supporters and your fans? Honestly, just what you're saying, everybody's been telling me that it's a timeless feeling and mm. how it's something that they feel like they can play over and over and right? How they feel it again, like it feels like ninety R and B used to be or gave them that that nostalgic feeling, like they're gonna remember the first time they heard it feeling. You know, I've gotten a lot this is probably my most I've released a few songs here and there, but this is my first real, real official single and I'm we've gotten so much love back from the song. I'm really excited to show everybody what I have coming next because we have so much great music on the way. Oh. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That I get to know you, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and as you continue to, you know, grow and I see you on higher platforms and things of that nature, I can be like, I interviewed him. Oh my goodness. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it, it's just amazing because I just feel like with you and with all of the other artists that I have been able to interview so far, I feel like there's just this major thing that's getting ready to manifest, right? And I'm going to see, I'm going to see all of you guys on this platform and we're all going to be interconnected because I feel like we're the new wave. We are the new wave. We are, you know, we're energetic and we're, and we're, and we're all participating in the arts in some way that is getting ready to take take precedence on a whole new level. You know what I'm saying? It's time for, it's time for, it's time out for, I feel like the village to stop celebrating certain artists and overlooking all the other artists that exist. I'm tired of it. You know, it's just like, look, I can't keep looking at the same old people when there's 20 people in my town that'll blow such and such out the water if they wrote a song, you know what I mean? So it's just really about for this show, giving my brothers and sisters the attention that they deserve that you're already getting and just to highlight and just to introduce you all, you know, uh, internationally, you know, just through a high, this platform because you all deserve it. Thank you. Though. This is phenomenal to me. I love that you're so into it. I really appreciate everything you're saying right now. Cause it definitely needed to be put out there and people need to hear what you're saying. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, you know, another thing I wanted to talk to you about when you perform and and, um, you know, the reaction from the crowd and how you deal with, you know, uh, fans that may get a little bit aggressive or a little bit, you know, caught up in the caught in the fantasy. How how first of all, talk about performing and what that feeling's like and the reaction from the crowd. That's amazing. And so how did you get over your stage fright? Because I'm sure you experienced some stage fright. Yeah, I mean, initially I did, but as I grew older, because um, I started out in church. Yeah. Oh, that that's the, the place. Because I was always the kid that wanted to do the solos and all the other kids were too cool to. <laughs> so for years I was able to, that was my practice ground. Like every Sunday I had a solo in the youth choir and in all the choirs. And all, all the, I pretty much joined the choir in church, even the ones that were not for me. Yeah. So solo, so yeah. That guy. Wow. And you know what's so amazing about the black church is that, you know, when you are in the children's choir, I say about up to age 15, you can you you can mess a song up and they'll say, that's all right, baby. Right. That's all right. Let the Lord use you. You know, that's all right, baby. Yeah. You know, but but when you get a little older, it's like, all right now. Now, wait a minute now. Right. Now, what's going on here? Now, hold on now. This is supposed to be the Mississippi Mass Choir. What's going on here? You know? <laughs> but it's just, um, it's just amazing that, uh, you know, you, you can get over and get really good practice being on that stage when you go through the, you know, the black church. Because it's just like, you know, you're on stage. I used to, my thing was, I don't, I don't sing, but I speak. So I used to do a lot of welcomes. And, you know, I would I, I'd be I'd be nervous. And the people would just be like, there's no way that you could be nervous. It's like, no, you don't understand. Do you, I used to right. look at people be like, do you guys know what the bubble guts are? Like, that's what I have right now. OK, I, 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 I'm about to really create some serious situations here. Like every time I, I that's just what it is. Like my my nerves right. get like that. But once I finish it, it's just like, oh, I love everybody. This right. is a great day. You know, I can eat now. I can sleep now. But I think it's because when this is your passion and you're standing mm-hmm. before people, you really want to do a good job. You know, right. you, you really want to do well because that's what people are expecting from you. And that's and and that's what you care. Exactly. Exactly. My well, uncle used to tell me that if you're not nervous, you don't care about it. He used to tell me that every time before I perform. Wow. He's like, if you're not nervous, you don't care about it. And that, that always stuck with me because I was like, why am I so nervous? So you, I changed it. I heard something recently where someone said, you're not nervous, you're excited. So I changed it to that. Okay. Because nerves is something, and, and see, I have to say this too. I, I learned also that you're already there. You already are bred and you're, you're born with the gift, so to speak. So there's nothing hindering you from your ultimate success when you get on a platform. Mm. It's just you delivery. And if you're already born with whatever it is for you to get up there and, you know, do whatever job it is, whether it be speaking like you do yourself or singing, you're already born with it. It's already invested in you. You just have to get out there and do it. Yeah. And half the time, once you open your mouth and you get out there, as soon as you open your mouth, you pretty much, you, you calm yourself down as you go along with it. Because mm-hmm. like, this isn't so bad. It's just always the anticipation. Yes. Yes, exactly. Well said. You know, and I think everybody else out there can relate. Those of you who are, you know, behind the microphone or have to make speeches or or anything like that. You know, I think the first time I did my first speech, I was two years old um, and it was my first welcome, you know, and I was like, I really want to do it. I really want to do it. And I got up there and I did it. And it's so amazing that, you know, your gift is so precious that you'll be doing things throughout your life and it'll all make sense one day. You'll be like, oh, that's that's why I did that then. And that's why that was training me for this and that. And oh my gosh. And it's just like, and I think a lot of times if we would allow ourselves to almost um, see ourselves as like a 5,000 piece puzzle 
And, and right. that would allow us to be more patient with our journey in the process because, OK, we know what the picture is. So we already know that it's already done. Now we have to catch it up to it in the flesh by putting it together. And so yeah. that's when we begin to understand that all things work together for the good of the Lord and those that love for the good of those that love the Lord. And it's just like, you know, once you understand are called according to his purpose. So once you once you realize that your life is like a 5000 piece puzzle and that there are going to be, you know, sometimes you can get the edges around and sometimes you start in the middle and sometimes you walk away from the puzzle and then you go back. But, you know, you need to finish it because, you know, this is the goal. This is the task. But we all have to be patient enough with ourselves to understand that some pieces don't come together right away and the picture doesn't always develop right away you're speaking to me I, I feel like you're definitely giving me a word i need to say i think as creators we do that and we're so hard on ourselves we're mm-hmm. very hard on ourselves and progressing and we never we're never satisfied with where we are we, we only want to get to the end goal, and that's something that i feel like we all struggle with but yes i, I hope people are listening because you're definitely dropping jokes right now I'm oh. Thank you, my brother. No, you, you're sparking this conversation and you dropping jewels and gems as well. So I think this is a, just a great, great conversation we're having that's going to bless the listening audience as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Because we all need we all need encouragement and we all need to be more patient with ourselves because that's how anxiety is born. That's how depression is born. That's how you begin to become jealous of other people and where they appear to where they appear to be or where they really are. And so if we understand that if we're patient with ourselves, that then we don't have to be anxious because we are supposed to be anxious for nothing, for nothing at all. We are to have no no type of anxiety at all. But so many people suffer from panic attacks and anxiety because of this one thing. We don't know how to be still. We don't know how to take time to be still to be still, to deep breathe, you know, to breathe deeply, to sit here and put these things into perspective. A lot of times the pressure is so real that we fold and that's how suicide comes about and cutting and, and drug, drug abuse and other type of issues. And so I just want to speak to everybody and and tell everybody right now, slow down and stop, stop. Slow down and stop, everybody, right now, wherever you are, just stop, unless you're driving. Just stop, you know, and and, and, and breathe in and out and, and write it down, everything that you've got going on. Write it down, the pros and the got to goes, okay? And I want everybody to also, once you write down the pros in your life, everything that you know is solid, good, that is that is true. And then on the other side, I want you all to write down the got to goes, everything you know about. And don't and don't don't lie. Don't you know, you know, don't lie about it. Be real honest about yourself. OK, because because this is going to change everybody's lives because I need everybody to get out of their feelings and start getting into their healings so we can progress as a village. Hear me. Pros and got to goes. That's all y'all got to do. And when you see that list. You understand what I'm saying to you? Then you need to pray. Everybody, you got to pray about it. And then you got to start working on the things in your life that you know you can change, that you can change. Look, we all are born with thorns. We got humble reminders that are supposed to keep us from being arrogant. But the things in our life that we can change, change. I mean, it's just like, let, do you let your children sit in their shitty diapers all day? I mean, I know you change that. So we've got to change these shitty diapers and walk with me, everybody. I mean, I'm serious about this. We don't let children shit sit in shitty diapers. We change it because we don't want them to sit in that. It smells. It's foul. They start crying. If it crusts up now, you've got situations, you know, you want to attack that. And it's your duty to change it. So whatever is in your diaper today, brothers and sisters, that is stinking, you got to change every day, every day. 
I thank y'all for listening to that, my brothers and sisters. So, you know, let's what let's let's talk about what what's up and coming for for and and first of all, I want to talk about how you got your name because your name my brother's name is Cedric. Well, that's his middle name. So when I saw that your name was Cedric, it's like of course he can come on. <laughs> <laughs> of course that that's my brother's name but um you know um how did what, what what's behind the name cedric brazel um well cedric is my well my whole name is pretty much my father's name so it was passed down to me okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um so yeah uh my family is really big on music so my grandfather's my um my uncle my uncle is Sony as an artist my two grandfathers were part of the band's Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. And so, you know, um, one thing I want to ask you, because before we get into, you know, what's next for you as far as, you know, uh, music tour dates and all of that and your website and all of that information, you know, I was thinking about the R and B music and I was thinking about your song while you were talking. And I think about a lot of songs and a lot of women listen to music. Okay. And it puts a lot of pressure on men. Okay. Because they be like, well, Trey Song said, um, and well, Joe said that he'll do all the things that my man won't do. You know what I mean? So, you, you know, how, how much pressure is it to actually live up to the lyrics for, for R&B singers? Because, you know, you hear all these things and you're like, you know, some women have said, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I, I finally got with this, this R&B singer and it, it was nothing like what his music was. He was abusive. He was disrespectful. <laughs> You know, so how, how how much pressure is it to actually live up to the lyrics? I don't think it's pressure and it's something that is real for you, you know. I mean, your reality, you have nothing else to live, live up to because it's your reality. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't think it's an issue for people who, who write the truth and who live that truth, you know. Mm-hmm. It's only a problem if you're just making up things and, and doing it for the hype or doing it for the opinions of others, but it was your truth. I don't feel like anything would be wrong with that. And there's nothing to live up to but yeah. 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 And so do you feel like because, you know, dealing with R- with rap music, hip hop, right. you know, the, 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 the expression of studio gangster, people who rap about it, but have never lived mm-hmm. it. So is there such thing as a studio R&B artist? You know, you you sing about it, yeah. but you ain't really putting it down till 10. No, I, I get it all. Right. No, seriously. And I think it, like I said, um, I, I think when you, when you're, when you're keeping it 100, you just allow an, your authenticity to really reach more people. I think a lot of people, a lot of people can really tell what's real and what's fake. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, you know, you can, you, you can sit there and be like, nah, nah, this, this, this right here is not going to fly. This seems a little janky. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, when it comes to your the the women that listen to your music, do how do you deal with um, the fans and uh, particularly groupies? You know, if you don't mind, I'm always intrigued by this. No, no, it's good. Um, I'm always accepting to love, so I don't have no problem with that at all. Uh, I think I think you just gotta, like I said, you gotta keep it real. And, and groupies, and I don't like to call them. I don't like to. I don't like to categorize people like that. I just call them supporters. So if anybody expanded on anything, I'm just the type to, I'll show you love back. I'm never the type to hmm. shut away from that or abuse that. So I, okay. I, what is it, what's the word looking for? I actually encourage it. Okay. So you just, so you feel like there is that. So what term would you uh, ascribe to, uh, you know, someone who is, um, you know, they're just not there to really because they're they're there for uh, financial gain 
or they're get there to, you know, get to the next, you know, because that does exist. I mean, you know, I was looking at the previews of the BET Awards the other day. And it was serious. I, I, I was serious. The, 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 <laughs> I ain't never seen so many women walking around with fishing poles in my life. I mean, it was serious that day. Uh, you know, uh, 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 they was trying to get on for real, for real. And it was just like, you know, you, you know, there's a difference between somebody who is like, I really, really love your music. You know, it's kind of like when you meet when you meet a fan and they start crying, right? Because they can't believe that they're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's like this is a fan. But somebody who is willing to take off their shoes and run bare feet behind a tour bus and get the bottom of their feet black. Okay. They willing to smoke to eat the exhaust of the bus just to get on the bus? Oh, 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 I'm just saying, though, they, they, they here for your mans and them. You know, there are sisters like that, and you know, and some are successful. Some are, they, they have decided that their, their journey, their passion in life is to, you know, try to see how they can get on. And a lot of times they do use, you know, sex to try to, you know, get on or trap a man or to say that they have such and such baby and, 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 and so on and so forth. So um, what type of wisdom would you say you have uh, gained you know, as far as your, your recording artist career is concerned and that some that you could even share with the other recording artists who are listening to this show this evening or on demand? I think it all comes down to two things. Discernment, mm. that's your concern, and you need to tell what kind of people come into your life or what are they coming for, if they're coming for a season or a long-lasting reason. I think that's what's always helped me. I've always kept people, I've always kept myself afloat because I don't, I don't, I just don't like too many people being around, so my whole life has been me discerning, I've gone through my own situation where I thought people were here for one thing and weren't here for, you know, here for something else, so I think discernment is number one, and, and secondly, you have to have a, a solid team, I feel like your team or people around you, family, whether it's family, friends, team, whatever, there's people around you that can, can highlight you what they see or their perspective, I mean, you don't have to say everything everybody says, but if if one or two people that you genuinely trust are coming to you and telling you things and you keep hearing things, eventually you need to open up your eyes to see. So I would say your team and discernment. Mm. If, if any of those things are off, you need to check out what's wrong. Mm. That's my biggest thing. Mm. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Your team and that good old discernment. But the thing about discernment is, you know, you... We have to be willing to t- to sh- to say something to somebody, and and also and 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 have and be willing to understand that everybody's not gonna listen. Cause you can see right. something happening or say something to somebody about something, but they know everything, and you can't tell them anything. And then next thing you know, it the ish hits the fan, and they looking at you for some toilet tissue, and you were like, I told you. You know what I mean? A long time ago that this was going on and it's just like, you know, sometimes we just have to be willing to say it and move out the way. You know what I mean? Right. It, it's like a, it's just like a, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just like an ambush. You know, you, 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 Hey, look, look, this is what's going on. You know, your man's over there or, or sis over there. She, you know, some ain't right. You know, you know, right. ch- check your funds or, you know, and, Sometimes right. we can get cocky and sometimes we go like, oh, no, my man's, yeah. I've known him for a long time. They never do that. And I'm like, look, do you know, the worst thing that can happen is when the killer is also the pallbearer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you say? One, somebody told me something, one of my coaches, my mentors, he told me some lessons are caught and some lessons are taught. That's one of the things that's going to have to be taught. Mm. You can tell somebody every day, but you can't really do it. You can't. You can bring the cow to the water, the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. So in that case, I said you just have to, I don't know, it depends on what kind of person you are, but if my team is coming to me and telling me something, I'm definitely going to eat it. Yes. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm just, I'm going to eat it. At least I'm going to look into it. You don't have to believe it, but you can, you can start picking up things for yourself along the way. Right. To cover yourself and just to notice, you know? So right, right. It depends on what type of person you're dealing with that you're telling. I think it's just, like you said, it's just, it's their humility as well. Like you said, sometimes they start feeling themselves so they don't 
Mm. How you want to listen to that humility counts too. Yes. Because if you don't have that, if you don't have humility, you can't. You might not be able to see clear. Mm. Lack of humility sometimes clouds and makes makes one blind. It does. Uh, it does. No, it really does. It does. And I think narcissism is the biggest thing that hinders a lot of people from progressing in their lives. There are some people who never admit or take accountability for their actions. They're never the cause of anything that is destroyed, uh, anything that has happened. They don't know how to apologize. Um, narcissists are always blaming other people and they are, and they need, and they also need it to be all about them. And they have to be the center of attention, you know, um, and they don't like it when anybody else is the center of attention. And so I think we all also got to pay attention to, do you suffer from narcissism? I want everybody to look up narcissism and look up the, so- the the signs of a narcissist and see if you fall in that category. And if you do, then you've got something that you can write on your gots to goes list. Because narcissism is keeping a lot of people from being able to even repent. Because if you don't think you ever did anything wrong, then you don't think you're a sinner. Right. Okay, right. Ayana. Mm. Okay. Ah, here we are today, you know, so I just want to encourage my brothers and sisters to be better because that mental health is really real. Okay. So, um, getting back to your music, what's next for, for your music and, uh, tour dates and, and anything else related to your brand? Right. Well, I'm currently working on my project. You guys are getting some special things, especially regarding to the morning, you're getting some special things really soon. Um, also, like I said, working on my project on release it later this year. It's something that's been a long time coming to me, and uh, I really think people are going to enjoy what they hear. They're going to enjoy the content. They're going to enjoy the feeling. They're going to enjoy the vibe. They're going to enjoy it. And I'm really giving them my own personal stories and my own recollections, recollections and things that I've been through. So I'm putting my heart on the line on this one, and it's going to be a really great project. So um, besides that, we're working on some other things, but I'm just waiting for them display them and put them out to the world when it's when they're ready. So they yes. put that as well. But right now, we're giving up on this project and making sure it's the best, best, best possible body of work it possibly can make. Oh, yeah, we are. We are. And um, I know everybody can't wait to hear, you know, the rest of your music. I would love to be able when you drop, you will not drop because anything you dro- that drops breaks. But when your album goes, when your when your album goes in the air. OK, you know, I want to be able to invite you on. You know, uh, we can have a nice little listening party. You know, I really want to be able to magnify your music in any way that you would permit me to. You know, I rock. I rock with you. I rock with your sound. You know, you you are a breath of fresh air to R&B. You know what I'm saying? It's just amazing. And it's just like it makes me literally smile from cheek to cheek because, you know, just when you're thinking that the music industry has forgotten the passion behind singing and the passion behind writing and performing and the, the passion behind good old school vibes of R&B, here you come and here other artists are. And it's like, nope, R&B is not dying out, um, you know. There are, it's the, the issue is, it's just that the independent artists and even artists that are signed, are there, some of them are not getting the, the attention and the play that they need. And so I want to encourage all other podcasters out there to start opening up your doors for our brothers and sisters to get some good rotation. Because, see, I'm trying to turn my show into a radio station. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going, not trying to, I'm going to, you know, because I'm here for it. So I just want to encourage all my brothers and sisters who have a platform out there, open up your doors to artists such as Cedric Brazel and, and other artists because I, I'm not going to be a hater thinking, oh, you're stealing interviews or this, that, and the third. Nah, 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 nah. God is not a midget, first of all. So my blessings, they, they, they're already fixed, signed, sealed, and delivered. So only thing that I can do is continue to be a gardener and sow those seeds. 
and you all need to be able to sow seeds too. You know, um, with your music, I wanted to ask, are they able to purchase till the morning? Yes, you can purchase it at any digital streaming service. I mean, it's Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Google Play, all of that. Anywhere that digital music is sold and streamed, it's available to you. That is amazing. Now, my brothers and sisters who uh, suffer from not wanting to support our brothers and sisters, you know, by buying products that they make, you know, we, we, we still are in this disgusting epidemic of we're very particular who we support and we love to support people that don't know us. We love to, to fork out dollars no matter how much it is. If, 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 if somebody's coming to town, you'll spend $500 for the tickets just so you can be in the same building as them. You know, you, you spend your money how you spend your money. And some of you are saying, well, it's not your business to tell me how to spend your money. Actually, it is. Because if I see my brothers and sisters not knowing financially how to support the village and make it grow, I am going to say something. And it is my business because you're not doing right. If you go to the Dollar Tree, it's 99 cents, okay? Some people have their music on iTunes for 99 cents, everybody. So I know that you have it because you just went to the Dollar Tree and went in there for one item and got 15. So I know you got the 99 cents. Okay, so some of you don't want to talk about the Dollar Tree. I understand. Some of you go to the dollar menu and you get your value fries, your value cheeseburger, okay, your value shake, and you go on about your business. So why can't you spend that money to support our brothers and sisters when it comes to their music? I need us to get into the game, my brothers and sisters, and go out and support this brother. And and, and, and no matter what it costs, pay for it. Some of y'all are too bougie, okay? You're too bougie, and it's just not working, and you're, you're tearing down the village when you only support people who you idolize. You know, it's like Michael Kors. I ain't never seen Michael Kors, but I see so many of my sisters walking around with Michael Kors bags and I'm not dissing or shading what people like. But if the price is three ninety eight out the door, you're going to pay that unless you're going to the outlet. But for most of you sisters, you're going to pay that. But what about our other brothers and sisters who make designer bags? And if they say that their purse is $378, you won't do it because you want that Michael Kors to be showed all throughout the club or that Gucci. And a lot of the, a lot of people ain't even buying the real stuff anyway. So now you really played yourself. Now your bag ain't real. Now, you know what I mean? Now, now your whole lifestyle is, is, is counterfeit. But if you would have just spent that money on your brothers and sisters, you might have been able to eventually afford a real Louis Vuitton. OK, anyway, I'm just saying I just want our brothers and sisters to really understand how crucial it is to support. You know what I mean? I mean, I have had so many people, you know, I, not only do I do this, but like I do voiceovers and I just charge twenty five dollars to do a a business ad that'll run every time I do a show. I've got international listeners. I've got professional ads that play at the beginning of every one of my shows. What, you know, but people say $25 is just too much money. Too much money. You know, people literally want you to, um, eat the air and live. You know, it's just like, uh, Would you try to make me eat a grass sandwich? You know, do I have to go out here and get some chocolate dirt casserole? What is this? You know what I mean? Like, I got to eat, too. I need gas, too. You know, I need toilet tissue, too. You know, it's just like people don't. And then it's just like people want you to want to see you do good, but they don't want to help you to get to do good. Mm, mm, mm. Cedric Brazel, you know, I'm going to have to have you come back on the show. No I'm gonna have to have you come back on this show. You you have great conversation. Thank you, thank you. No, I appreciate you so much. You know, so um, is there anything else that you would like to share? You know, because this is the part of the show where I give the artist an opportunity to you know impart some jewels, some more wisdom. Mm-hmm. To, to the listening audience and, you know, whatever it is that you want to talk about, you know, 
share share with the listening audience just some wisdom that you feel led to uh, bless them with. I think the biggest thing, and I'm going to keep saying this, is to not let other people project their fears on you, and not even your own self. Sometimes we get, people get so caught up in saying, and when you share your dreams with them, they get so caught up in telling you how hard it is, or how difficult it's going to be, or all the things that are wrong with your dream, and all the things that you should be doing in turn. But if you really feel like you were born to do something, and you were born to live out a certain purpose, then you need to go for it, because that's what you were here to set forth to if, you, if you're doing something that's helping people, then you, you're pretty much setting the ball to your purpose, and you can't allow anybody to take you off of your path or take you on, out of your journey, no matter what. Not even yourself, because sometimes we act as our biggest, our biggest, biggest enemy. So my biggest jewel or biggest word with them is to don't stand in your way and don't allow other people to project their fears on you, mm. specifically. Mm, mm, mm. That was well said. Ooh, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, my brothers and sisters, but a sound mind. You better know it. Now, look, don't start today. Don't start. Don't start. Don't start. Uh, you know, Cedric, uh, this is the time where I want to just take the time to encourage you and um, and to really send you with so, just some really great electric vibes. You know, it takes a lot to be able to step out on your passions and to be patient with yourself. And um, it takes a lot to still continue to live and breathe when we go through certain trials and tribulations. And I just want to thank you, number one, for still staying in the game. And I want to thank you for creating music and and having an ear and an understanding for music that's going to help people out that can rekindle romances, that can um, set romances to a whole nother level, that can just make people understand that, you know, I'm going to make it. You know, I just want to thank you for being obedient to your gift and 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 for doing what you do. You know, um, I can I can you're welcome. I can tell that you're solid. I can hear it in the way that you speak. You know, I can tell that you know what you want. I can tell that you are definitely, as I said before, you are surrounded by a team that believes in you. Shout out to Chrissy for introducing me to you. I must say hello to that sister because she reached out to me and she was, you know, she was like, you know, I just want you to listen to this and, you know, you can play it on your show. Now, you know, anytime somebody reaches out to me, I feel like that's a blessing because that to me, it says that, okay, you, you saw my show or in whatever aspect you saw it in and you believe in it enough to want me to play the music. I really appreciated that. And so when she told me about you, I clicked on your music and I listened to the whole song and I said, oh my gosh, we have a winner. And I was so excited. And it was just like, um, you know, I was just like, wow. But, you know, I, I, I cannot just play his song without interviewing him. I have to... I've got to set up this interview. The, the, the listening audience would be upset with me if I did not get this brother on. And so shout out to this sister and and uh, your manager, you know, for for believing in you and being so professional and, and, and being so excited and supporting you, uh, you know, with this interview with just your your endeavors, you know. So I just want to commend you for for all that you are doing with R&B and how you are contributing to the music industry with great music, breathtaking music, music. You're welcome. Music that is just what music is supposed to be. You know, good music never went out of style. It never went out of style. It never went out of style. It's just that some people are not authorized to be behind the microphone and uh, are not authorized to really uh, reach audiences that are international, national and local. They're just doing it to do it. You are supposed to be behind the microphone. You are supposed to sing. You are supposed to perform. Your website is dope. Your brand is together. And your media skills are absolutely phenomenal. And I just want to say, um, you know, please continue. Please continue to press through. Uh, Please continue to, uh, no matter what it looks like, understand 5,000 puzzle piece. 
5,000 puzzle piece. When it gets slow, when you feel like you're getting low on energy, you know, just remember the pieces are coming together. And a lot of times, and of course, and a lot of times we have to understand that most of the time, uh, back in the day, pictures were developed in the dark room. And in a dark room, there's not, there's light because darkness is a form of light, but it, it's a dark room. And there's a process that used to go on when it came to developing a picture. And then you had the Polaroid camera and the Polaroid camera, you know, you hit the button and it, dun, 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 and this picture comes out and you got to shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it. The picture's there. But you just got to shake it until it comes into manifestation. And so we also have to remember that sometimes we are just like that Polaroid picture. Oh, the picture's there. But sometimes we have to be shaken in order to be developed. Ooh, brothers and sisters, you better praise God for the earthquakes in your life. You better thank God when things start to look like they're all Falling down because a lot of times you are being reset. So I just want to encourage you, my brother, to continue to press through, continue to make great music and continue to be who you are. I can only imagine, you know, what's to come. I'm going to be front row cheering you on along with everybody else. And please don't forget. I need you to come by here with your music. Anything that you need me to play, I will play. Any announcements you need me to make, you know, uh, have, you know, just send me a direct message and I'll make them. You know, I really support you. And so this is not this is not a one time thing. This is a revolving door. Your sister speaks show family. And so that's how we take care of family. You know what I mean? Anything you need. I got you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so one thing I do need. Oh, of course. And, and wait, wait. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Say what you just said again. No, I said thank you for this platform and really being supportive and really, and really giving into and allowing your voice to be heard on this platform regarding music. And it's really, this is inspiring that you decided to take your platform and your journey and really give back to the community. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Tell everybody your Instagram information, website information, Facebook, so they can all get in touch with you. You can follow me, or you can go to my website, www.cedricworld.com, or you can follow me on all social platforms at cedricworld, Ooh, brothers and sisters, you know... Um, I couldn't have had a great, a better interview this evening. I am very blessed. You've been blessed to hear a wonderful interview. Miami stand up, Florida stand up. Everybody stand up and let's just give this brother a round of applause because you've been blessed to listen to and be on. Definitely continue to be on the lookout for recording artist Cedric Brazel. My brother, this is not going to be goodbye this is just going to be that i'll talk to you later and i will send you a copy i'll send you a copy of of the interview um did you you had a good time on did you have a good time on the sister speak show on the tour i really did i really did okay so it's not too much energy it's amazing energy i, I enjoyed every bit of it okay good 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 okay cool i'm so excited you know once again thank you so much and i will definitely talk to you later okay Okay, take care. Brothers and sisters, give a round of applause for Cedric Brazel. You know, I was just thinking, everybody, I was just like, oh, my goodness. You know, I love R&B music, so I'm almost over here, and I'm scrolling through my playlist. And I'm like, okay, I want to be, you know, I don't want to... I found a song that I think you all are just going to really feel. You know, we already played uh, Till the Morning. So let me see. Without any copyright issues. Here we go. This one, All I Do, Kirk Whalem. Just a little bit. Hey, 
Hey, you know, you're listening to the Sister Speak Show where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts, sister. Spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana. Ugh, listen. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. So anyway, brothers and sisters, when you listen to the tour, understand that we are we're here to focus on every aspect of the music industry. Managers, CEOs, publicists, you know, um, musicians, the bands, just everybody. You know, the entire aspect of the music industry is is crucial and it has to be resuscitated to where good music is flowing through the atmosphere. We always want to hear fresh music. We always want to hear great vibes. So understand that when you're listening to the Sister Speak Show, I'm, I, I, I'm here to introduce people who are absolutely phenomenal and, and you need to know about. You know, this is an international love thing that we have going on when it comes to the music vibes. You know what I'm saying? And you'll be able to say like, oh, I remember him because he was on the Sister Speak show. You know, it's just that's just what it is. And so I want to encourage everybody uh, who who writes, who uh, is a manager, who plays music. I mean, excuse me, plays an instrument, who produces, you know, big ups and salute to you, first of all. And reach out to me. I'd love to interview you. All you have to do is direct message me at SGTPGW on Instagram. Or you can contact me at SisterGoodThings.com. That's my website. I'm getting ready to revamp my website to make it more current um, for the vibe. Guess what? The Sister Speak Show will be a year old August 6th. Yes! Yes! so excited about that I'm so grateful for the longevity I really really am so listen when you're listening to the tour don't forget you'll be able to catch special guest interviews dope music you know great great commentary and just a just an electric vibe add us to your listening shuffle you know you can also go ahead and follow me on Spreaker you know syndicated on Amazon Alexa you can listen to us on iHeartRadio as well as the other platforms that are mentioned on our flyer. So we've got a nice selection of special guests coming up this month, my brothers and sisters. You know, um, not only that, we're going to be having more episodes for the other segments and, you know, just bringing back a stronger vibe. You know, being able to listen to the tour, being able to listen to the laugh line, being able to listen to the search effort, coming to the stage, the culture climate, you know, as well as mm, culture climate, the tour. Yeah, that's it. The platform, the culture climate, the search effort, the tour, the laugh line. That's amazing. Did I, did I miss anything? No, search effort. No, we got it all covered. Anyway, brothers and sisters. You know, when you listen to these, you get to be introduced to the village as a whole. Dope brothers and sisters, amazing brothers and sisters, okay? So listen, you be blessed this evening. You be encouraged this evening. You love this evening. Love yourself. Be patient with yourself. Get rid of that anxiety. You need to stop worrying. Do you bite your nails? Are you pulling your hair out? Are you pacing the floor trying to figure it out when God has already worked it out? Oh, this isn't a cliche. See, you've got to learn how to trust God. You've got to learn. Excuse me. I can't mention him without mentioning his son, Jesus, the Christ. You see, you've got to have this in your spirit. That's the only way you go make it. If you don't pray, oh, you're in trouble. If you aren't praising, oh, you're in trouble. I'm serious, brothers and sisters. I really want you to excel in all that you do. And I don't want you to be a hater. I want you to be activated in your purpose, in your passions. Let's stop tearing each other down and let's start building each other up. Now, I ain't trying to march. I ain't trying to have no workshops. Okay? I'm just telling you, just do it. Okay? Just do it. Brothers and sisters, you know, the time has been well spent. I thank you so much for being a special, special listening audience. Shout out to Spain. Germany, Finland, Ireland, 
the Philippines, Canada. Who else do we have? Jamaica, darling. We had, uh, was it London? London. You know, um, oh, Bogota. We also had um, Brazil. Thank you, Australia. Thank you all for listening to the Sister Speak Show. And shout out to all of you all. Hello, hello, hello. And may you all be kept and may you press through. I don't know what it is to live where you live, but may you be blessed. May you be blessed. Shout out to the 12 tribes of Israel. I am your host. Ayana, I need you to tune in. July. July. Um, all this month. Listen to the Sister Speak Show all this month. Like I said, we've got some really dope special guest artists coming on. They're going to, you know, listen to the laugh line. Oh, my goodness. I've got a stand up on there called She Is Funny 10 Minutes. Well, I'm really sitting down. If, if, if you want to have a great, great time in the comforts of your own home and be able to laugh, you know, get your listening tickets. It's free without having to, you know, step outside the house and have to get into some mess. Please listen to the laugh line. Stay tuned. You can always catch up on everything that's going on with the Sister Speak Show on Instagram at SGTPGW. Now, look, you need to buy these little beauty cutie books. They're for the little beauty cutie in your life. Leah's first summer vacation is available for purchase for you right now. Just $10. An audiovisual book for iPad and iPhone only. Brothers and sisters, you be blessed. You take care. You stay strong. Everything's going to be all right. I'll talk to you later. Shout out to my special guest this evening. Shout out to my special guest this evening, Cedric Brazel. You be encouraged. I'll talk to you later. God has already worked it out.